am Napoleon. I will kill everybody. Ah, die, you British dog. I will be emperor. Already happened, then you're dead. Ah. Yeah. Yes. Ahoy, and welcome to Five and Thirty. This is a new show where I'm going to be looking at five things in 30. So what does that mean exactly? Well, just imagine five days in 30 seconds, five stories in 30 minutes, five rumors in 30 days, five major events in 30 months, five people in 30 years, or five technologies in 30 decades. That's just some examples. The possibilities are endless. Ahoy! Today we will look at five emperors from the last 30 decades. And there's no reason to wait, so let's crack on. Born in Corsica and descended from minor Italian nobility, Napoleon went on to become one of the most famous people in history. He has some significant achievements to his name and is widely regarded as one of the greatest military minds ever. Je suis invisible, gorgeous, très joli, et j'aime le big canon. After graduating from military school in 1785, he began as an artillery lieutenant in the French army. Then the French Revolution began, which allowed Napoleon to rise to Brigadier General in a very short period of time. He then fought wars in both Italy and Egypt before returning to France to involve himself in a coup that allowed him to become a first consul and eventually emperor. Emperor, mais oui, et un très joli emperor, mm, très joli. While in power, he undertook a liberal civil reform program and implemented the Napoleonic Code, allowing freedom of religion amongst other things. Obviously, Napoleon and his non-monarchical attitude did not lend himself to the monarchies of other European nations, most especially the British, who spread the idea of him being very small in stature, where in fact he was probably about an average height for his time. Python, this is the place where the people had it. Boop, boop. After a terrible tour in Russia, imprisonment, escape, and then famously defeat at the Battle of Waterloo, Napoleon was banished to the island of St. Helena by the British to live out his days where he wrote his memoirs and died, aged 51. Funnily enough, many people don't know that Napoleon was actually scared of cats. Mm. No, no, no. Probably the most bizarre of all of the emperors and presses is Queen Victoria of Great Britain. As by the end of her reign, she ruled over the largest empire to have ever existed. Yet she never fought in a battle and spent most of her time drinking tea in her sitting room. Well, she is British. What do you expect? <laughs> When she came to power, Britain was just at the culmination of the Industrial Revolution. Britain was on full growth. After a somewhat error-prone coronation, <laughs> she fell into her role as queen very well. She fell very much in love with her future husband, Albert, and they married in 1840. Within 17 years, she'd had nine children. Four years after their last child was born, however, Albert died of typhoid. The Queen was irrevocably changed. She shirked her royal responsibilities completely without delegating them to others in the royal family, leaving a growing anti-monarchical sentiment. Finally, she woke from her grief after being crowned Empress of India, and even though she never went to India, she was obsessed with it, bringing in Indian servants, learning about Indian culture, and learning to speak Urdu. She lived to the ripe old age of 81, and by that time she'd become the grandmother of Europe, being related to kings or queens of Germany, Russia, Norway, Sweden, Sweden, Greece, Romania, Spain, Mexico. But not La France, no, vive La France. The empire itself had grown significantly throughout her reign. Yes. As Napoleon had been defeated four years prior to her birth, she had inherited a Britain with no natural rivals, allowing the nation to commence a period of growth that added 10 million square miles of territory and 400 million people to the empire. Not bad really, all things considered, I'd say. Maybe we should all stop running around and trying to get so much done and just sit down and have a cup of tea. You English scum, I hate you British. <laughs> Now, I'm clearly not a native Mandarin speaker, so you'll pardon my pronunciation. A Sin Gyoro Puyi, famously known as the Last Emperor, was the last Chinese emperor ever. A movie was made about him and it was called 
the last emperor. He was born in 1906, even though by that time all over the world many countries had undergone many political and industrial revolutions, China still had, by and large, the same feudal system that had existed for over 2,000 years. By the age of two, a series of deaths in the ruling Qing dynasty had left Puyi as emperor over all China. Obviously, this situation led to rebellion throughout China, widespread disobedience throughout the army, and eventually led to Puyi being forced to abdicate in January 1912, aged six. This is one of the most significant periods in Chinese history, as it marks the end of the feudal system and the beginning of the Chinese Republic that we know today. Now, Puyi himself went on to be restored as a ruler of different areas of China for different reasons, over different periods of time, over the course of his life. But as a fundamental symbol of imperial China, he was jailed for 10 years as a war criminal after the formation of the People's Republic in 1949. He died in Beijing of complications arising from kidney cancer and heart disease on the 17th of October 1967 at the age of 61. Now I found a fantastic YouTube video that's really good, I would definitely advise watching it. Chinese history is something most people don't know very much about, it's actually really interesting. So take a look, it's here. Ali Selesi was emperor of the Ethiopian Empire from 1930 to 1974. The Ethiopian Empire was apart from Liberia the only African nation to remain independent following the scramble for Africa, a period during the 19th century when the European imperial powers went about conquering Africa. He is most well regarded as a promoter of multilateralism and collective security, ideas that are still highly regarded by the international community to this day. His regime has been criticised by human rights activists and by historians claiming he failed to modernise quickly enough. Obviously, he is most well known because of his perception by the Rastafarian movement, the Jamaican religion which developed in the 1930s as Jesus in his second advent, i.e. the second coming of Jesus. History records his death as suspicious. Officially at the time, the now deposed and imprisoned emperor apparently died on the operating table following a prostate operation. Claims his doctor later denied. In fact, there is still a debate to this day especially amongst Rastafari, whether he actually died at all in 1975. Many think he's still alive. John VI of Portugal, or should I say Don Juan no Sexto, was born in 1767 and over the course of his life saw much change and very little stability in his empire. This was largely due to one individual. Yes, you got it, it's him again. Napoleon. The empire spanned Portugal, the Algarve and of course Brazil. In 1808, Napoleon invaded Portugal and Don Juan ordered the transfer of the royal court to Brazil. A few years later, Brazil was elevated to the status of kingdom and the capital was transferred from Lisbon to Rio de Janeiro, the only instance ever of a European country being ruled from one of its colonies. This however coincided with the demise of Napoleon at Waterloo and the reorganisation of power in Europe, leaving Portugal mostly as an unofficial British protectorate. Although the royal family returned to Portugal in 1821, the political landscape had changed significantly. Also, Pedro, John's son, had orchestrated a revolution in Brazil and declared independence, possibly at his father's advice before leaving. Without the resources from Brazil, Portugal's economy was in tatters, and after a lengthy period of political instability, John was poisoned by arsenic. I've got to say, I can imagine better ways to go. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'd put your sword away. And that's your five. Thanks for watching guys. Please do like this video. And if you're watching it through Twitter or Facebook, there's a little logo down there with a YouTube logo. If you click on that, it takes you to YouTube. Then you can hit the like button. That's the way to do it. And if you want to subscribe, you've got the little thumbs ahoy logo up there somewhere. Lovely job, Liz. Thank you very, very much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you next time. If you're wanting more of the crazy vibe, then go ahead and hit subscribe.